Jenga. Once you touch it, you can't keep your hands off it. Fool you! Don't get strung up by the way I look. Before we get to tonight's game, I think it's important we talk a little bit about horror. You see, there are very many different types of fear. There's that spine-tingling feeling you get on the very last line of a good ghost story told well. Cause it turned to what? <laughs> then, there's the short, sharp shock of a... <coughs> of a jump scare. Ooh, ooh. Scream. There's cosmic horror. Not a personal or private matter of terror or survival, but the inner workings of a universe, either malicious or, in some ways worse, uncary. My god, the stars. And finally, there is perhaps the most sought-after form of horror. Every horror movie goes for it, but so very, very few actually accomplish it. Suspense. That nail-biting, edge-of-your-seat terror that has you waiting in dread anticipation. Where the tension cranks up so high that even a mere... Jump! Scare. Can be a welcome relief from the mounting dread. Tonight's game is designed to replicate that exact feeling. It's called Dread. No, not that! Dread doesn't use dice, or cards, or any other sort of random resolution system. It uses Jenga. That may seem like an odd choice, but when you stop and think about it, when you're playing Jenga and you're trying to find that loose block and, and the whole thing starts to teeter and rock back and forth, and you get all nervous and sweaty, that's suspense. Jenga is doing exactly what filmmakers the world over struggle to accomplish. Let's face it, Jenga is just about the scariest game since Jumanji. Jenga, Jenga. This isn't a game that expects you to have any experience with RPGs, which is a good thing. Let's face it, it's Jenga. It's a freaking party game. It's just, you know, instead of tower collapsing and people going, Jenga, you die. Horribly. You may be wondering though, with a game like this, where do you have room for all your skills? And where do you put intelligence and strength? And how does that affect you pulling the tower? All I can really say is, you're a crunchy little munchkin, aren't you? So, do you screwheads believe I can save you from Kandarian demons now? Before each game, the GM will come up with an individual questionnaire for each player. How you answer the questions will determine whether or not certain tasks require more or fewer pulls, and may make some tasks require none at all. If you're specifically a professor of Latin, you can probably read Latin without making a pull. In this way, character creation is very simple for the players. It is much more difficult for the host, who has to spend all the time writing the questionnaires, and when each one can be 12 to 15 questions, it can be a pain. The host will most likely be doing one-shots. While it can be made into a full campaign, the rate of character death doesn't really help with it. On the subject of survival rates, I cannot stress highly enough that you get a proper Jenga set. I started with Jumbling Towers. Sure, it seems like a good substitute. A little smaller, maybe a little more flimsy, but doesn't have Jenga written all over it. It's significantly cheaper and has this very nice, aesthetically menacing, crooked appearance. The problem... Well, let me show you. Jenga. 
Jumbling Towers. Of course, there are other resolution systems listed in the back of the book. You don't have to use the tower. But why would you be playing this game if you're not going to use it? I mean, it's Jenga. Jenga, Jenga, J -j 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 For those of you who don't know how to play Jenga, how do you not know how to play Jenga? Just roll the clip. You take a block from the bottom and you put it on top. You take a block from the middle and you put it on top. If you manage to do that, your character succeeds in whatever they're trying to do. If you fail and it falls over, you die. Fatality. Besides, these guys are awesome. They made Jenga into a horror game. It's like making Mousetrap into a dungeon crawl. Gears grinding, ropes binding, coils winding for a super sap. <laughs> Death trap. And of course, it has scenarios too. Boom! Ah! What? You never saw the crow? The game does indeed come with three different scenarios designed to show the full scope and breadth you can play with dread. Beneath the full moon is a horror survival game set in the Grand Canyon, and, well, I think you can guess the twist from the title. Beneath the Metal Sky is a sci-fi horror in which the players search a seemingly abandoned spaceship. And of course, Beneath the Mask. They look at a simple slasher story, only this time, nobody's quite sure whether one of the other players isn't the slasher, or, indeed, whether they are. Of course, by far I think the best game is one you can find on their website, tiltingatwindmills.net. Thirteen. It's a bonus game that they made for Halloween some years back, concerning a group of children on a sleepover. It is by far the scariest of the bunch. And you can get it for free. Between what we've told you here and what you can find on the site, you'll have everything you need except a Jenga tower. Well, I don't know how else to end this, so I'll just look off camera and scream again. Ah! Ah! Oh, excuse me a little. Oh, jeez. Never worked the way you want me to. Zombies? What the? Th that's not even a proper. Ah! It's... Jump scare. Right. Ah! Okay, I'm getting really sick of the. Ah! You know, I really surprised this little tower lasted this long. Jenga, Jenga. <laughs>